thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you taking time and coming in with us as we prepare our hearts tonight to study the Word of God together. We are grateful, of course, for our church family. We thank God for Wish Yakin, and we certainly miss our brethren. We're looking for uh, the day when we can come and gather together in the sanctuary and worship together. I think it's going to be a wonderful day of rejoicing, a wonderful day of reunion when we get that opportunity. But we are glad for these electronic capabilities that we can come together this way. And we are uh, posting our teachings up on uh, YouTube under Sister Kimma's channel. It's Kimma Wall, K-I-M-A-W-A-L-L, if you want to look on there. And if for some reason the live streaming were to stop in the midst of it or not work properly or something, then uh, we are uh, recording in such a way that we can put it up on YouTube uh, separate from uh, Facebook. But uh, we are glad to be able to do a certain amount in real time. And we'll give you a few moments here. Hopefully there'll be others that will jump on here with us and be a part of our live stream tonight and be able to study together in real time. We do want to have prayer tonight and pray for all those that are being affected by all the things that are happening. And of course, uh, if you would, uh, let me know if how you're doing with everything that uh, I'm trying to stay connected and making calls around through our church membership and all that, but um, and certainly all the other folks that we know about that we feel that we need to check on. But uh, let me know uh, how you're doing with things. And of course, we stand by ready to try to respond to any emergency that we may have in our church family. Uh, we are seeking to uh, uh, pray with and counsel and Encourage those, of course, that are facing uh, sicknesses and other things. We are touching base with a number of different ones, but we do appreciate you and your support of our church. We give God the glory for bringing us this far, and we want to pray for our other um, uh, sister churches and everyone in our community, Christian people, of course, who are seeking to honor the Lord during this difficult time, and we pray that... Um, God's will will be done and that the word of God will go forth and have free course and be glorified in uh, these times together. And so we uh, uh, just come before the Lord tonight in prayer. Let's do that. Let's bow before the Lord and ask God's help tonight. Our Father, we just thank you for this privilege that we have to join together this way and be able to pray together and be able to seek your face. Father, we thank you for all the things that you've done for our nation. We pray, Father God, for a continual uh, breakthroughs and revival across America. We pray, God, that you would minister to our president and other leaders, our governor here in North Carolina, local leaders, Father, all those, Father God, that are on the front lines and facing the many difficulties of serving those who have contracted this coronavirus. And we pray, Father, for your help in all the different situations where it's needed. We pray for your wisdom and guidance uh, for those that are in such positions of influence across our country. And Father, we pray for those families that are bereaved. We ask for your special help and grace for those uh, who are facing the reality of the loss of their loved ones. And Father, we just join together as a church family tonight to pray for one another throughout our church family and throughout our community. Uh, Father, we know that there are needs and we're not hearing about as a result of not being together. But Father, we look to you tonight to move and to minister in the lives of all your people, whatever the needs are. Uh, Father, we worship you now and honor your name. In Jesus' name, amen. We are looking tonight to the Word of God in the book of Colossians, the first chapter. We take a few minutes to open up the Word of God this evening, and we believe that you'll be encouraged and edified in the things of the Lord as we uh, uh, embrace the Scriptures and seek to teach God's Word. The Bible gives us in Colossians 1, verse 9, down through 11, these words. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. This passage of scripture gives us an opportunity to talk about Paul's prayer for the church at Colossae and of course we can make reference to some of the other prayers that he prayed for other churches. And we uh, are able to see these words right in the very first verse we read, how Paul talked about both his desire and his prayer for the church of Colossae. And it reminds us of another passage in Romans 10, verse 1, where Paul said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Those two words uh, jumped out at me as I was preparing this and begin to think about Paul's prayer and his desire. And of course, we as believers, we want to have 
I deserve both for the lost and for the saved. And Paul the Apostle uh, certainly gave forth his desire, his uh, longing to see Israel saved, that he had a desire for them and a love for them, and that was his prayer to God. And then uh, to the church at Colossae, he said, I have this desire and I have a prayer that I'm praying for you. And I pray tonight that there will be a desire and a prayer for us, both for uh, the lost, uh, we pray for the lost to be saved, and then we pray for Christians to be filled uh, with the things of God. You'll notice he said, my prayer is that you be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And I have taught these prayers for many years and prayed them for myself, and I have found that these prayers are very powerful in giving us a biblical model to be able to follow in praying, and it gives us a lot of insight into how Paul the Apostle dealt with those new converts and churches that were being established and all that. And I think these prayers for these churches are a special help to us. And what is really interesting about this prayer at the Church of Colossae, apart from other things, is that he's praying for them because he's heard of their faith and of their love. You'll notice verse number four of this same chapter says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints. He said, We've been praying for you ever since we heard about your faith in the Lord and your love to the saints. Hearing that they had gotten saved and a church had been established was a tremendous blessing to the heart of the Apostle Paul. Uh, Colossians 2 verse 1 says that he never saw any of them uh, really face to face that had been uh, brought into the church of Colossae. But there were two people that had evidently gotten saved under the ministry of Paul that went back into uh, the area of their own hometowns, we believe, and that is Epaphras and Philemon, these two men evidently had gotten saved at Ephesus in Paul's ministry, but then went out into the Lycus Valley of Colossae and began to minister in homes and various other places, and a church was born there. Once Paul gets word concerning the church being established and people getting saved, he says, that is why that I'm praying for you. So whenever people get saved, that's not the time to stop praying. That's the time to continue praying and even ramp up our prayers for them concerning their spiritual development. Uh, Paul the Apostle certainly had a tremendous heart and prayed for the lost. He was a tremendous intercessor. But then once people were saved, he knew that they had a great need to grow spiritually and to come along in the things of God and become aware of, of the things that belong to them in Christ and how that they should grow spiritually and all that. And so uh, from those teachings, from those verses, we we're able to gather some things concerning even the modern church that you and I, we need to I certainly spend some time uh, praying for new converts and for one another, for churches. Uh, he just brought the Apostle Paul such joy to hear about their faith and their love that he said, I'm praying for you. And then he begins to tell us what he was actually praying for. He reminds us of what he said to the church at Galatia. Galatians 4.19, he said, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. And so... He said to the church of Galatia, in some ways, it's almost like they are his children. He was responsible and played a huge role in them coming to Christ. He went into that area that was considered an area of barbarians. He goes into that area, preaches the gospel, and people are saved as a result of his ministry. And then he says to them in this letter, I travail in birth again. Evidently, this is a very strong praying. This is travailing. When we use the word travail, it often is connected like a woman giving birth to a baby, the kind of pain and discomfort, the agonizing that a woman would go through to be able to give birth to a baby. And we know that is somewhat the way it is with intercession. In Isaiah 66, the Bible says, as soon as Zion travailed, she, bring forth, uh, she brings forth her children. So Paul was very much aware of, and, and God used him in this way of intercessory prayer. We believe that every uh, child of God can intercede like this and and then we can be just as anointed to pray as somebody would be to preach or to sing or to, to manifest a fourth ministry in some other area. And so we're calling on Christians during this time to pray. Some folks are at home more than they were, some not as much as they were because of the essential type job. So there's all different kinds of situations going on. But for those that are of us are around home more or maybe have more time, uh, it's a really great opportunity for us to I see our prayer life strengthened. Of course, we have much to pray about for our nation, but we need to be praying also for Christian people. For this purpose, Paul says, I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. In other words, he's praying that they will uh, become full grown in the things of the Lord, that they will become Christ-like. What an honorable way to pray. What a great way for us to focus 
Uh, our prayer lives, uh, what a great area for us to focus in, to say, yes, Lord, I'm praying for myself and for others that we might uh, truly be Christ-like, that we might uh, be filled with the knowledge of God's will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding. Knowing God's will is a foundation for our faith in so many areas. Once you know the will of God, then you can have faith for those things that you uh, now know about. Uh, faith begins where the will of God is known. So we encourage people to get in the word of God and in prayer and become conscious of God's will. When you know the will of the Lord, it gives you a great foundation on which to stand to be able to pray and to go forward spiritually. And my prayer is that um, when we do come back together in our sanctuaries and have times of teaching, and that people will go forward spiritually. It's not right for us to stand still. If you're standing still spiritually, you're actually already going backwards. There is no standing still. We must uh, go forward. We must continue on. But the writer of the book of Hebrews said, let us go on into perfection. And uh, one verse there indicates, he's, he's saying really, let us be swept along by the Spirit. If we are living according to the Holy Spirit, he's going to move us uh, to a place of greater growth and greater development in the things of God. That's where the joy and victory is for the believers. So we're doing everything we can when we're teaching God's word to show what the Bible says about this, that God has real spiritual victory and growth for us. And we are expecting that, uh, that God's going to work things out. You'll notice that the Bible says that Paul the Apostle said, I pray for you that you might be filled. It goes on to say, of course, and we uh, quoted a couple of times already with the knowledge of his will, my wisdom, and spiritual understanding. But first, I want to point out the fact that he wanted to see them filled. Uh, God doesn't favor emptiness. Uh, there's a couple of times in scriptures whenever emptiness was a positive thing, but most of the time, uh, it doesn't uh, you know, refer to something that is positive. Whenever the earth was without form and void, uh, God didn't leave it that way, that the earth was renovated with a seven-day renovation from God that caused the earth to uh, be very different than what it was when the Bible says it was without form and void. Uh, we want to be filled with the things of God, of course, and Paul prayed that for the church. You remember what he said concerning the church at uh, Ephesus when he prayed for them? He said, this is my prayer, that you would know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. He prayed for the church at Philippi that they would be filled with the fruits of righteousness. And I pray that, uh, that we too, and I pray it for myself, uh, that we would be filled. Ten times in the book of Acts, the Bible says that Christians were filled with the Spirit. And then the Bible says in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, that Stephen was full of faith and power. And then you'll find another place in the book of Acts, the 6th chapter, the 8th verse, where the Bible says that they were rejoicing. It says, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Here, even while they were going through a rough time and persecution, they were filled with joy and they were rejoicing. Uh, that's amazing to us somewhat. The Bible says uh, in another passage, Acts 9, 36, that there was a woman named Tabitha, which her name by interpretation was called Dorcas. The woman was full of good uh, works and alms deeds, which she did. And uh, studying out a little further the definition of these things, that she was abounding in good works and acts of love and charity. Now, doesn't that sound like a full-grown Christian? Doesn't that sound like somebody that's going forward spiritually, that they are abounding in good works, just full of good works and alms deeds? So what we learn from the Scripture is that it, whatever it is that we are filled with, that's what we're being controlled by. On a negative side, in the book of Acts, the Bible says there were some people that were filled with wrath, than others that were filled with envy. In the four Gospels, there were times when the, uh, some of the leadership of the nation of Israel would be filled with anger toward Christ and they would be uh, contemplating what they could do to him. They were under the control of those things. That's why we want to encourage believers to consider seeking the Lord and literally being filled with his word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and be filled with his spirit. Uh, being filled is something that is very prominent in the New Testament. And it's something that Paul prayed pretty much for every church that he had contact with, every recording that we have. He's praying that those churches be filled with the fullness of God is one of the phrases that he, he gave while he was uh, teaching those and writing them these epistles. Well, tonight we ought to lay claim to that and realize that uh, if the Bible says for us to be filled, then that means God will fill us. Uh, the Bible says, Blessed are they that are hunger, for they shall be filled. That's one of the Beatitudes of the Scriptures. 
You will not be disappointed if you come before the Lord and fellowshiping with Him, worshiping with Him, feeding on the Word of God. The Bible teaches through that we will be filled. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Billy Graham said he visited one church and one of the deacons was showing him around the church and he said to Billy Graham, he said, recently we had somebody here that was drinking a lot of wine and they were staying uh, under the influence of wine and so we put him out of the church. And Billy Graham said, well, okay. He said, uh, you put out the one that is uh, drunk on wine, but he said, are you going to be putting people out of the church if you're not filled with the Spirit? <laughs> and that is a thought, you know, are we going to start putting people out because uh, they're not filled? And I've learned that the enemy of our souls will try to get us to stop short of being filled at all times. The enemy comes against anything that has to do with the teaching of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I believe the reason he does because, you know, when people get filled, uh, that changes their life. Whenever people are filled with the Word of God, and so the enemy comes along and says, well, you really don't need to, to read the Bible all that much or whatever. It's an old book and a lot of it's, you know, it's all been around for so long and things like that. The enemy has one idea after another to try to keep people from being filled or to hold back spiritually. Somebody said, you'll go crazy if you read the Bible so much. That's what I was told when I was younger coming up, you know, some people read the Bible too much will kind of go crazy. But if they read the Bible with the help of the Spirit and in the light of what God is doing in their lives, they, they won't go crazy. They'll go quite the, the opposite. They'll grow in the Lord. They'll become more Christ-like. They will enjoy the peace and the blessings that are associated with that. Uh, there is so much health and strength in the scriptures and walking in the spirit that people's lives uh, will begin to find a, a area of blessing and all that that is just not available to people any other way. And so we encourage people to consider being filled with the things of God and allow it to be in control of their lives. Paul the, also, uh, Paul the Apostle also prayed in uh, verse number 9 that they would receive insight. He, not only did he ask that they be filled, but that they be filled with the knowledge of his will and our wisdom and spiritual understanding. He wanted them to enjoy uh, the insight that comes from walking in the spirit and being a full-grown Christian. He wanted them to be able to have a spiritual discernment or spiritual understanding. And of course, this is uh, something that really applies so directly to what was going on at Colossae because uh, Colossae had already had a group of people to come in there with false teaching that they began to teach that they had special knowledge and that uh, they were referred to as Gnostics, and they'd become pretty proud about uh, their area of spiritual knowledge. And that's how false doctrines are. They always appeal to the flesh and to the pride of man. When people really get filled with the things of God, it tenders the heart and it humbles them, and they approach the Scriptures properly. And that's why they're so blessed from it. But when people pervert things or allow some type of uh, teaching come in that exalts the flesh and exalts pride, and in the case with the Gnostics, they wanted to say that, that they had access to knowledge that others did not have access to, that they were a special uh, type of people, and that they had things that others couldn't receive. But uh, we know that uh, the Lord will uh, allow any person and every Christian that, that would want to walk before him and be filled and to reach out for spiritual understanding, it is available to them. The Bible says that in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's not hid from us, it's hid for us, but it's all in Christ. So if we're walking in Christ and fellowshipping with Him, being filled with His Spirit and His Word, that spiritual understanding will begin to take hold in our lives. We will have insight that we would not normally have. The Bible refers to that somewhat also in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 when the Bible talks about having spiritual understanding. It actually says in verse 13 of the second chapter, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This is how you're able to get to the real understanding of Scripture, whenever you compare spiritual things with spiritual, when you get a spiritual understanding. Paul wanted them to have that so that they would not be overwhelmed by false teachings and false teachers that would come along that would just be trying to make an appeal to the flesh. They'd be able to see through all of that. They'd be able to have a better knowledge of what's going on because they've humbled themselves to the Word of God and allow God's Word to take authority in their lives. The Bible says the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And it's wonderful to have some spiritual discernment. 
And sometimes we think that that means that people must have a lot of education, a lot of years of university study, and we are certainly are grateful for education. But you'll find that the ones who have spiritual discernment are the ones who have walked with the Lord and have spent time in God's Word and have practiced the Scriptures. That's why you'll have somebody out here sometimes that uh, may have not had that much formal education, but yet they have a wisdom uh, that has uh, helped their lives, and you can tell and see the mark of God upon their lives. You can see the evidence of God's blessings upon them. Now, that is what we really are seeking for in this life. We want some spiritual understanding and spiritual discernment. We want to be able to compare spiritual things with spiritual and be able to sit under the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm a teacher. There are other ministers that are teachers, but the Holy Ghost, he's the teacher. And these are the things the Holy Ghost teaches. And he teaches us how that we can grow spiritually, how we can grow in our character. Uh, Paul the Apostle prayed for them that they would actually walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. If you notice verse 10, that you may walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Imagine, uh, you know, just how... Uh, uh, counterintuitive this has become to us in the body of Christ so many times people tell us that they don't feel as if that they could walk worthy of the Lord but Paul was praying for the church at that time that they would walk worthy of the Lord we constantly hear about that people have fallen short of the glory of God and we agree that mankind has fallen short of the glory of God but evidently through the new birth and what Paul's praying for the church at Colossae He's praying for them that they would walk worthy of the Lord, that they would not uh, fall short of the glory of God any longer. Uh, I've never seen a time like it is now in the body of Christ where so many Christians will say that you just have to sin every day. <laughs> That's uh, the word that I get all the time is, you know, and people they just make a lot of emphasis about that. But, you know, whenever you think about how he prayed, he's praying that they walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That sounds like a victorious Christian. Here we are, we're singing victory in Jesus out of one corner of our mouth, and then out of the other corner of our mouth, we're saying, you've just got to sin every day. Now, we know we miss it, and we probably miss it more than we ought to, but yet the Bible doesn't say we have to. It's almost like we've got more faith in the devil's ability to tempt us than God's ability to provide an escape for us. That's where through spiritual understanding and spiritual discernment, we begin to realize there really is an escape for us. We don't have to sin. We might. John said, these things are right to you that you sin not. We really don't want you to sin. If you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. But he lets us know that he that committed sin is of the devil. And the word committeth there, through the word study, we understand that means that somebody who practices sin. So I'd like to see Christians quit getting up and saying that I've just got to sin every day. Some even sort of say that I've got to sin all day every day. <laughs> It doesn't sound like the Christian faith. It doesn't sound like how the church started. In the early church, they were expected to grow in the Lord, to take their place in God's kingdom and begin to enjoy a victory that comes from growing. It's like so many things in your children's life as they're growing up. There are things and mistakes and things that they do when they're younger that uh, hopefully later on that they won't be doing those things any longer because of maturity and growth. They're able to set aside those behaviors and, and begin to uh, do things that are different. In some ways, there's a parallel between spiritual growth and physical growth. Just as when people grow physically, and it's such a miracle, you know, whenever you see people's children, you haven't seen them in a while, you see that growth, you're like, man, have they shot up and all that. And it, it comes like a miracle to us. We don't really fully understand it. We know you eat food and you drink water, and you, but yet this miracle happens. And uh, we don't understand spiritual growth completely, but we know if we take in good nutrition, spiritual nutrition, if we walk before the Lord and fellowship with Him and choose to do His Word, we begin to mature and we don't fall into the same things we used to fall into. If we're still falling into the same pits that we used to fall into as a baby Christian, we really need to get honest before God and allow some growth to begin to take place. Paul the Apostle wasn't satisfied with just uh, saying to these new Christians that he's just glad that they got saved and act as if they've got it all and that they don't have any need for any further development. Instead, he said, when I heard that you have faith toward God and love toward the saints, he said, I pray for you that you'd be filled with the knowledge of his will and wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. And studying that out, I learned that uh, it actually is saying, I pray that you will have, uh, that you will fulfill 
God's desires for you and that you will have a desire to please him. He literally prayed for their desires. Uh, it takes a little bit of study to be able to do that with the words. Of course, we uh, are benefited somewhat by going back to the original Greek and looking at some of those things. But he's saying to them, I'm praying that you will have a desire to please him, that it won't be just something you do, you know, just out of fear alone, just because you're afraid something bad will happen to you if you don't do these things. But that he said, I'm praying that you'll have that real desire. It's a little bit like the Isaiah scripture where the Bible says, uh, for us to be willing and obedient. Folks can be willing sometimes, but not obedient. Others can be obedient, but uh, really they're not entirely willing. They're just doing it because they're afraid what might happen if they don't. But Paul wanted them to have such a heart to do such growth in their lives that they do these things because they want to, that it becomes the joy of their life. It becomes the focus of who they are. He prayed for them that they would have this desire to walk before the Lord and to be pleasing to God. It matters whether or not we take this seriously, whether or not we really want to please the Lord in our daily walk. In doing so, of course, we are going to be fruitful. And then verse 11, he says, strengthen with all might. These are the areas I want to focus on tonight. And last of all, this word strengthen, of course, has to do with us becoming stronger spiritually in the sense that we become more sensitive to the things of God, more aware of what it is that we have in Christ. The Bible says we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. But you have to be aware of those things and appropriate those things to be able to enjoy them. If we are weak spiritually, we have a rough time being able to lay claim to what it is we've been given. And that's why we have to think about getting built up spiritually. The Bible teaches that we can build ourselves up on our most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. We need to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And that is something that takes place uh, through prayer and uh, it's certainly something that takes place by acknowledging uh, what it is that the Lord has done for us and what he would have us to do. Now, when I come across uh, the story of a, a husband who went into the hospital after going in there, uh, he was very weak and his wife had to get a paper signed so that she could access some accounts to be able to pay bills and exist while he was in the hospital and be able to take care of him as well. So uh, she brought in a paper to have him sign his name, but he was too weak to even sign his name. Finally, he had to just make an X and she had to get people to witness that he made an X to be able to make this legal so that she could have access to the wealth that they had as a family. I've actually been in the hospital visiting the sick before. A nurse and doctor called me out of the room and asked me to go down the hall and witness for somebody else while they made their ex. I've had that experience myself. But this couple I'm speaking of, uh, the lady almost didn't get to use her wealth because he was so weak that he couldn't even hardly make the ex. He finally was able to, to make the ex. I've learned a lot of times why we're not walking in what God has for us is that we're too weak spiritually to even lay hold of it. That this world has left us very dull. If we're not careful, you'll be very dull spiritually. Paul the Apostle warned the church at, uh, or the writer of the book of Hebrews. We think it might have been the Apostle Paul, but uh, the Hebrew Christians, he said to them, if you're not careful, you'll be dull spiritually. You'll be weak, in other words, when it comes to understanding and appreciating spiritual things and the things that have to do with what uh, God has promised us and all the things like that we need to lay claim to. And that's why we're concerned about people's uh, spiritual lives and encouraging people to do more than just seek for Christian entertainment. That's why we can't let our church services just disintegrate into just trying to do whatever makes people happy. Uh, we've got to do the things that actually have to do with edification and not just entertainment. Uh, some entertainment, of course, is fine and some of that is wholesome as long as it's not something that's taken away from our spiritual lives. But there's got to be the actual ministry of the Word the Bible says God's word is manifested through preaching. Christians need preaching and they need teaching and real ministry. We've got to do more than just come up with a, a cute little way to approach scripture or some little moral of the story. Uh, we, we're here to do more than just to give people a, a set of morals. Jesus didn't come just to give us a moral code. He came to give us life and to change our lives and to give us uh, real redemption in Christ Jesus. And so I pray Tonight, as Paul the Apostles prayed for all of us, I prayed for myself. I often pray this prayer for myself, and I desire that you, you pray this way for me. Pray that I be filled with the knowledge of God's will, 
and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Pray that I might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. Pray for me that uh, I'll be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Uh, that's how we want to be strengthened. Unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. We'll know we've been strengthened if we've got some patience and some joy in the midst of tribulation. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You think to yourself, that must have been a misprint. But here it says, if we're strengthened, we'll have some patience in the midst of what's going on. I was a little bit impatient right at the beginning. First time I went to the grocery store after this virus thing, and I said to myself, I got to do better. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that people were going to set up shop and buy everything and go out there and start selling it on the side of the streets and toilet paper and everything else. And so I was, I was a little bit hot about some of that to begin with. I was like, hey, what is going on? You know, but uh, the truth is, if we are stronger spiritually, we're more likely to be more patient, long-suffering, we're more likely to give off a, a better Christian testimony, we're better able to offer uh, something that is in contrast to the world around us. So people might ask a question, say, what, what gives them this strength? What gives them this joy and blessing in the midst of hard times? It's because of the work that God is doing within us. He's strengthening us by his spirit in the inner man. And in that prayer, Ephesians 3, Paul went on to say that Christ may dwell in our hearts by faith, that we're being rooted and grounded in love. Colossians 2.7 says, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It's my prayer tonight, brethren, that we be rooted and grounded in the things of God in such a way that it'll make our, it'll make our lives very different and it, the testimony of that will come forth. This world is looking for something right now more so than normal probably. And this is our time to shine that in the midst of all this that we can bring forth a Christian testimony. All of us have probably missed it one time or another along these lines. Right now is the time for us to pray and say, God, help us to be filled with your spirit, to be controlled by it, that our steps and our actions might glorify you. Tonight I pray that you've been blessed by the passage of scripture and our time together tonight. Uh, we look forward to that time in the future when we can get together personally and be able to worship together. We just anticipate a great rejoicing when that day comes, as we mentioned earlier. But we will be giving you our announcements as we go along as we look a little closer to the weekend we'll make a decision about whether or not we have a, a parking lot service or how that may work and of course we're still uh, trying to hear you know should there be any changes and what's going on from the government uh, but it's our goal to try to get together when we can but to pray for one another at all times and glorify God as best we know how may the Lord bless you tonight thank you so much for joining with us praise God